Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank Malarsic and in this video, we're going to be looking at my M1 Finance growth portfolio and just looking at the, some of the stocks I've owned and you know how those companies have been doing, how the portfolio is looking at as a whole. If you find value in my videos, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. This is Frank Malarsic. So right now the portfolio is around six hundred seventeen dollars. Uh, definitely has been performing poorly the past few weeks, a uh, few months, you know. But a lot of the stocks I own in here have been down pretty big, and we'll kind of go through a lot of those here. Um, but the first thing I wanted to look at was just activity. You know, every week we are depositing fifteen dollars on Monday, and you know usually those trades don't get executed in basically the trades get executed once every two weeks, essentially, because you have to have minimum of $25 to, you know, make any automatic trades. And I don't really make any manual trades. So if we just look at the most recent uh, buys, you know, we had these five companies that we bought, you know, a few dollars of each. And I kind of wanted to talk about the thing that some people have been talking about in M1 finance, where basically they think that M1 is executing trades at a higher price than the market is trading at at that point in time. And how M1 Finance works is they basically um, have a trading window, which occurs between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. every day. And if you pay for their premium service or whatever, you can also have a later trade window later in the day. Um, but you just set it up to do whatever trades you want. And I don't even do that. Basically, I just say auto invest my money at the percentages that I put. And so it, you know, auto invests the money at those certain percentages and it happens between 9.30 and 10 a.m. So what I wanted to do is kind of go through the trade prices of some of these stocks and see, you know, if the trade price is close to what the price looks like it was during that time period. So first of all, for this square uh, buy we did here, um, we bought on May 9th and the share price was $93.17. So if we go onto a chart here, this is the 30 minute chart. So this candle right here is for May 9th, 2020 from 9.30 to 10 a.m. It opened at 93.06, the high was 93.97 um, and the close was at 89.63. So it was definitely in that range. Um, it was definitely on the higher end of that range, um, but that's you know kind of what's gonna happen. You're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some. If we try to look at a more granular time period, um, we'll try to find the same moment in time if we can. So let's zoom in here to around this point. And it always auto scales, which is kind of annoying. So let's just zoom in here, like right here. And if we look here um, at 9.30, um, it opened up, uh, you know, a little bit of a red candle. And then we had a green candle where it spiked up. Uh, basically to the high of that 30 minute time frame and then drop down some so we probably got our trade executed within the first two candles there um, which is interesting to see first basically 10 minutes of the window so, but we're definitely within that window and if we look at the next one here which is amazon this one says it got executed 2262 uh, so again we'll look at amazon stock see what that looks like um, and see if we can zoom in here um let's see to right around here and so if we look at 9 30 we had a big green candle up to a high of 22.59 and then we went up more to 2280 and then we had some kind of meh candles around 2270 2260 and our buy price was what uh, 2262. So it was definitely after the first five minutes that our trade got executed with Amazon. So that looks like it's pretty much in line with where the stock price at was at. Uh, I guess we can look at one more here. I guess Jumia, the stock price was 618 for that trade. So let's look at that one and see what we can see. Um, so let's here. And if we're looking at 930, the first candle was red. Um, opened at 626, it went down to 603, and then we were around 605, uh, 608, with some, but those had some spikes up a little bit, so probably executed within the first three candles, I would guess. Uh, so again, you know, 
the prices are not the best prices of those first 30 minutes, but um, you know, it's definitely still within that window. So there's nothing else you can really include, I would say at that point. So um, honestly, I was never too concerned about that, but there was definitely some people who thought that, you know, they weren't getting the best prices, but the thing with M1 Finance is if you're using M1 Finance, you're not really worried about getting the absolute best price because the way M1 Finance is set up, it's best to have a very long-term outlook for your portfolio uh, since you're just buying, at least how I do it, I'm just buying on a regular basis. Uh, you know, I have all these stocks set to specific um, percentages. So VGT, I want it to be 17% of the portfolio. So it buys the correct amount so that VGT stays right around 17% of the portfolio. And same with all these other companies. So, you know, my outlook is super long term. And so if I don't get the absolute best price, uh, you know, that's not the biggest deal. <clears throat> and as you can see here, I definitely did not get the absolute best price on a lot of these companies because we're down pretty big. Uh, so a few I wanted to talk about um, was VGT. Obviously, this is a ETF information technology ETF from Vanguard. The current price is around 350 and my average cost base is around 400 and honestly 400 for me is you know a great price I think and so if we're at 350 now and I'm just going to keep buying that's just going to lower my cost basis over time so I really have no problem you know being down on this, this position because I want to buy more of it and at a lower price um, it's you know giving me more shares and so it's like going to the grocery store instead of the bagels being like two dollars it's now one dollar fifty cents which is pretty awesome so just a little analogy there uh the next one i guess art k you know still 10 percent of the portfolio i'm probably going to bring it down if it ever recovers some um just because uh this one's been one that i have definitely fallen into the trap of a little bit with kathy wood and arc invest but you know in the long term i definitely want to bring this down as a portion of my portfolio but that's not something we're going to mess with right now um the next one i guess i want to talk about would be amazon google google and amazon but google hasn't had as much happen to it you know i'm pretty happy with google not down too much on the position but amazon down about uh well this says i don't know what it said overall um I think it might have said yeah it says down 50 percent on that position but it uses the time weighted return which i really or the money weighted return which i really don't like um but you know my average cost is around 3100 current cost around or current price is 2200 so really down you know less than a third there but for me amazon is a great company 3100 dollars per share is not the best average cost on it but 2200 is a price that I love buying Amazon at. So I really have no problem with the price being at this point because it's just a great discount and it's gonna lower my average cost. So that when it goes up to 3000 again, um, I'll have even more gains. And it looks like I was logged out for some reason. Maybe I was logged in for too long. So I'll log back in and then we can continue looking at some stuff in just a minute. And the next one we're gonna look at here is PayPal. Um, so this one down fairly big, my average cost is around $168 per share compared to Current price of around $78 per share. Honestly, $168 per share is not a bad price um, at all, in my opinion. So, you know, I'm really not too concerned. And, you know, the current price obviously is way lower than that. But I think, you know, me buying the stock at this price, it's just going to keep lowering my cost basis even more. And so if it just sits around here for, you know, a few months, maybe a few years even, you know, that's not really that big of a deal because in you know five ten years i think paypal stock is going to be worth a lot more and i think you know their business is just very solid so um i want to own more of this company so if i can buy it at a cheaper price that's really just a great thing i think because i really don't need these investments to like live on or anything anytime soon or use this money anytime soon so i'm really not worried about the short term um and same thing with Square. They've been really beaten down a lot as well. Average price is around 174. This, you know, that price is definitely, a, you know, high for me. It's, you know, I would not, if I had to choose at what price would be, you know, a fair value of Square, I would say it's probably below 174 at this point in time. But I think they have a lot of potential as well. And if I'm buying right now at $84 per share, um, that's just going to lower my cost bases and make any future gains all that much better. So again, in general, the theme with this portfolio is a very long-term mindset. And so, you know, stuff like this is going to happen for sure. And because of the, I guess, sort of growth nature 
have a lot of these companies they're definitely not as proven and so when there's downturns in the market they're going to get hit more and that's pretty much expected so um if you guys do want to sign up with M1 Finance, I think it's a great platform. It's super easy for me to use, and I really don't have to pay attention to it much at all. And so there's a referral link in the description down below, which I'll show you guys right here. And basically what you do is if you sign up and deposit $100 into a normal account or $500 into a Roth IRA, then you get a $10 bonus, which is pretty sweet. And, you know, I would also get a $10 bonus as well. But um, you know, it doesn't cost anything extra for you. So if anyone's interested in signing up, you can use that uh, link in the description. And um, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, I would love to hear what you guys think about some of the stocks that I talked about in the video, um, such as ARK K. Obviously, that's an ETF, but that's a definitely a controversial one, I would say. And, you know, PayPal, Square, Amazon. Um, so definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Just want to thank everyone for sticking around to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.